Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Since other networks are determined to ignore it, we open tonight with more coverage of the horrific alleged rape in Rockville, Maryland. In this minute will show you the shocking emails, and they are shocking, that Montgomery County school officials have been sending to parents vowing to protect illegal aliens at all costs and threatening anyone who complains about that. But first tonight, police say they have ample evidence that the accused illegal immigrants Henry Sanchez Milan and Jose Montano are guilty. But Sanchez now has a squad of lawyers saying that he is in fact innocent. Watch. Well, you know, it just seems that the physical evidence is not there. There's no scratches, there's no bruises, there's no uh, uh, injuries like that. There's physical evidence of both a, uh, a rape and sex assault, yes. She's absolutely adamant that she did not want this to happen whatsoever at all. Well, David Moiz is an attorney, a partner at the firm representing Sanchez Milan, and he joins us tonight. Mr. Moiz, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank so, you, Tucker. There are reports that you all plan to argue at your firm that the rape was, in fact, consensual. Uh, two men, one of them a legal adult at 18, the other 17, and a 14 year old girl in a high school bathroom. How could that, in any sense, be consensual? Well, Tucker, this is a, an ongoing case. This has just happened last Friday. And yes, the preliminary indications we have was this was a consensual encounter, not a rape in any sense. Between two guys, 17 and 18, and a 14-year-old girl in a high school bathroom, I mean, you'll pardon me if I seem astonished that you would be bold enough to assert something like that. That seems insane. It certainly seems horrible that that would occur in our schools, even consensual. It seems like something that we wouldn't want in our community. But that doesn't have anything to do with whether or not it was forced or coerced or in any way illegal. But I mean, that's just that's but even saying that out loud, I mean, is a fact in effect an attack on this girl who told authorities that she was raped. So is your argument going to be? that she invited sex with two men in a bathroom at her high school in the middle of the day and then lied that it was rape? Tucker, I think what you're going to find is as this case goes on, there is a lot more evidence that will come out. And all of us involved are ethically constrained from discussing details. But this case will go through the course and the system will have evidence that comes out. It's okay. not just what has been the initial sensational headline. So, so what's, I mean, you're a partner in a real law firm. Um, you right. weren't assigned this case. You, uh, you apparently took it voluntarily. Why did you do that? And who's paying for the defense of this guy you're representing? Well, I, I don't know that I'm going to get into details of who. His family retained us. His father is in this country and hired us to, to do this case. And this is what we do. We represent people who've been accused of crimes. It's what but our why, nation wait, has done since but, its but founding. But why wouldn't you, quote, get into details of who's paying you? Why not? I... I bound by many ethical considerations such as what I've been told by my client, what I know about the case that cannot be made public. And so I've got larger responsibilities to my job and my license and my practice and my client, but I can't talk about everything. So this kid was facing deportation. Um, if he's found innocent, if you get him off on these charges, will you continue to take up his case to keep him in the United States? You know, I don't do immigration law. I, we have attorneys at our firm that do. My understanding is that this young man will face deportation, even if exonerated from what the accusations are. What do you think of that? I think that's a larger issue that I'm not hired or paid to talk about. But I can tell you that the focus right now as an attorney and as a human being is on making sure that our children are protected, making sure that the bottom line of this story is found out, the truth, one way or another. So be honest, would you be comfortable having your 14-year-old girl in class with this guy? I have two children. I live in Montgomery County. They're young children. They're not in school yet. But I want nothing but safety for my children, their friends, my family, and everyone in my community. Right. Well, okay, we all do, but that's not answering the question. This specific guy, your client, would you feel comfortable having a loved one go to school with him? I, I don't know him. I, I literally don't know him, and I, I can't begin to answer that question about a single specific individual. Certainly these allegations have caused everyone a lot of concern, and they should. This, this is absolutely a horrific allegation. But I mean, I, I think that's something you would think through since you're going to be arguing in public on behalf of this guy, and so doesn't his character, his, his capacity or not to do something like this, does that enter into it? Do you think, you know, is this guy guilty or not? Is that a consideration for you? 
everything's a consideration. I'm sure there could be a number of questions asked about all three of the people involved in this. Five days into it, really? you can't what, what, answer what those the questions? questions. What, what would the That's questions why trials take several what, months. What would the questions be raised about the 14-year-old girl who says that she was raped in the high school bathroom and apparently whose screams were heard by her classmates? What questions would you raise about her? I don't know. I wonder what questions were raised about the accuser in the Duke lacrosse case or what this was raised the on the Rolling Stone this Virginia the, this case. This isn't the Duke lacrosse. I'm asking you a straightforward question. You're the one who brought it up. You said questions could be raised about her ominously, and I'm asking what questions? Well, you just talked about the character and the, the different aspects of Mr. Sanchez. I think everyone involved, the person accused and the person making accusation, puts their character into play. Man, you better be right about this, because if you're going to be impugning the character of a 14-year-old girl who says she was raped, other people say they heard her screams. I, I mean, to impugn her character, I mean, you really, before God, better be sure that you're on the right side of this. Does that occur to you? I think what occurs to me is that we have a system here, and when people are accused, we go through the system. But you don't Nobody. need to trash the accuser, Nobody. and you're already beginning it. You're, you're already suggesting I, that I there are questions that can be, I mean, you know exactly what you're doing. And you I'm speak not a in any your, way. Well, of course you are. Questions could be raised. That's exactly what you're saying about her credibility, about her character. You just said that. And my only point to you is, have you thought through the moral consequences? And I know you play a role, and I'm glad defense lawyers exist. But before you say something like that, do you think, man, I'm kind of putting my soul on the line here a little bit before doing something like that? Do, do you have those thoughts to yourself? I, I, I'm a human being, and I have all of those thoughts. I think as we learn more about this case and as you see more of the facts, everyone will be able to evaluate this case. Okay. It's, it's, it is okay. day five. Yep, that's true. And there's, there's a lot of things we don't know. But I mean, that's I think should be a consideration for you. Finally, can you, can you see why? And you, you have said, look, his immigration status is irrelevant. But can you see why people don't think it is irrelevant? Because he was in and out of U.S. custody a bunch of times, federal custody and then state custody in Maryland. And he was let go. And now he's accused of a violent rape against a child. So if he had been deported, as he should have been legally, you'll concede, we wouldn't be here today. So why is his immigration status irrelevant? It sounds like it's very relevant to me. His immigration status is irrelevant to whether or not he did it. And my job is to defend him and to try and get to the bottom of the facts of whether or not he did. So it isn't relevant to the issue of whether or not this occurred. And that is exactly my point in that answer. Well, I mean, we, but he, he wouldn't have been in the school. He wouldn't have been accused. He wouldn't have retained you. The girl wouldn't have questions raised about her character if he hadn't been here, right? Right. This also isn't the first sexual assault case where I've ever been hired for. And yeah. many of them are citizens, natural born citizens. Right. So it's not an issue of whether or not people committing these crimes are immigrants. It's whether or not these crimes are being committed. Well, people who already have broken a crime and shouldn't be here in the first place wouldn't have committed the crime if they weren't here. But maybe that's too obvious. Mr. Reese, thanks a lot for joining us tonight. Absolutely. Thank you, Carl. Tucker.